Welcome to Mid Card Maniacs. I'm Jay. And I'm John. And today we're doing our AEW Blood and Guts episode of Dynamite Predictions. Yep. Initially, we thought this was going to be one match, the Blood and Guts match, which is basically war games, where you have two full wrestling rings with a giant cage over top, which is absolutely insane. Everybody loves a good war games match, but Cody Rhodes, even though his father created the thing, he can't get the name because WWE are pricks a little bit, but this is even more important because we wanted to see this over a year ago. They were hyping this up and then the global bastard, as other bigger YouTube channels <laughs> would call it, it was supposed to happen in New Jersey the week after uh, we were supposed to go to the New York show. It's, it's sad, but it's finally happening. We've got the pinnacle, we've got the inner circle, it's going down. It was initially gonna be one two hour match, now they've added more things to the card. So we're gonna go through the, everything. We'll start with an easy one. Dr. Britt Baker is in action. Who do we think she's going against? It'd be interesting with all these promos and buildups if it's Jade. Only because then you can delay Britt Baker going for the title. But they also need to build her up for something at Double or Nothing, because that's what's gonna happen. I think they would put Jade on the card. They would say Britt Baker versus Jade, to be honest. I think it's gonna be a jobber. I'm sorry, Tesha Price or Danny Jordan or Kylan King. I think it's gonna be a jobby spot because we know the whole point of this card is going to be for the main event. So I think everything's gonna be fairly quick matches. I'm calling a job. And I'm calling Jade or what would be nice, our girl Ty. There's no way they wouldn't advertise Britt Baker versus Ty. Just in action, Ty Conti. Yeah, okay, but <laughs> all right. Moving on to something that's just as ridiculous. John Moxley and Eddie Kingston versus Kenny Omega and Michael Naka, Naka, Nakazawa. Come on. I know that they're best buds. I get it. Kenny loves Nakazawa. He's a funny guy. What's not to like about Nakazawa? He's gonna get his fucking ass kicked by Mox and Kingston. What do you mean? Oh yeah, the match isn't even gonna happen. Literally, is gonna be like Kingston and Mox in the ring, and then Nakazawa's gonna come out, and Omega's just gonna leave him high and dry. He's just gonna get his ass whooped. Yes, that's what's gonna happen. <laughs> Next up, we've got a tag team match that sets up for a number one contender slot, which is SCU versus Jurassic Express versus the Varsity Blondes versus the Acclaimed. It's gonna be SCU. They've already cut promos, going after the Bucks. It, it just makes perfect sense. Double or Nothing is at the end of May. SCU versus the Bucks with built-in heat being that, hey, we're the first champs. We wanna be the next champs too. That just makes sense. We already know what the Acclaimed's gonna do and this is something personal for me, is they're gonna be teaming up with my boy Christian Cage soon and uh, Christian's gonna have those great moments like he usually does when he raps. You said you can freestyle, hit, hit a little something. Do, do what you gotta do. Tomko, give me a beat. <laughs> Which I kinda actually, on a side, I really hope that happens because think of it this way. Then you build up a feud for like double or nothing. When Christian's done with this whole like Taz thing going on, Team Taz, just have him and the acclaimed versus Big Bunny Matt and Private Party. And it'd be a baller match or something. You can see the branding already. Masterpiece style <laughs> logos all over the place. I'm for it. Give me that rap element. We like it. We like that Cody t-shirt that dropped that looked like a Master P album. It'll make them say, uh, uh, na 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 na, na 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 na. Only the old hip hop heads will remember that gem. <laughs> or anyone who's watched Booty Dang. Sadate. Next up, we have the match everybody wants to see. Cody Rhodes versus QT Marshall. He's turned his apple eating gimmick into being a bad apple. I don't think I'll ever get behind QT. I like his faction. Anthony Agogo is really dope. I like his whole punch thing, like the one punch man. Very cool. Yeah. Uh, big fucking Nick Camrado. That guy is a beast. I kind of liked him in the straight jacket situation <laughs> where he was a like, wild boy, but he's good. And Aaron Solo, I don't think he has like the gimmick yet. Everyone else in the factory is making QT cool. That's the problem. It's getting to QT's head. He thinks he's cooler than he is. He's not cool. But he's trying to be so cool. It's, it's moments like this, I wish we had Carlito bite into his apple and spit it in his face and tell him how he's not cool. We That's what we need. <laughs> we need Carlito and QT Marshall. I'm the only one who's ever requested that match in 
the history of wrestling. Anyway, Cody's fucking taking it. Actually, he's probably not, because he's gonna eat the pen so that they can continue to build up the factory to be this heel stable. It's literally just gonna be a squash for the build up. Like, it's not even like the match is gonna happen. Uh, the factory's gonna come out, they're gonna attack Cody while he's down, and then throw him in. And Cody then, is gonna say, Hey, it's fine. Let's ring the bell, and then just yeah. Dustin and Billy Gunn. Like they're they're all just come out and like how many people are in like the Nightmare Family collection? I don't really right know now? because there's a Gun Club that is nested within the Nightmare Family. It's kind of strange. I'm not a big fan of how many factions are happening. But in any case, they are building up to the factory versus the Nightmare family for double or nothing, at least some part of it. I don't know which members will actually fight, but that's what's gonna happen. And finally, we have the blood and guts match between the inner circle and the pinnacle. This is gonna be fucking crazy. And I am very excited, as I'm sure every single person is. I genuinely don't know who's going to win. The inner circle, they're the face. They're the ones you're gonna be rooting for because they're the underdogs, technically, in this storyline. And then you have the pinnacle, which is a brand new faction. So does a new faction eat the loss or does your underdog actually lose? It's like a lose-lose scenario here. Yeah, which is strange for such like a high profile event. What I think will happen, buy your pinnacle shirts now because it's fucking crumbling. They are losing and they are going to split up and we will go back to some four horsemen shit at some point. I don't think the pinnacle is actually going to continue after Blood and Guts. I think it was put together simply so they can recreate the Blood and Guts. We had the five on five with the elite and all that and it's like, well, we don't have the elite anymore unless we want Good Brothers doing it which would have been awesome. But the pinnacle was only put together, it seemed just to quickly get this match in there. So I think we're going to split MJF and Wardlow out of the pinnacle so that they can find their next person for the Four Horsemen. And I completely agree with you. I would love nothing more than that to happen, but there's something in the back of my mind. Sammy Guevara is gonna turn heel. He's gonna leave the inner circle and join the pinnacle. Really? Storyline wise, it's this whole big plan that MJF had because Sammy was the one who was always against MJF in the inner circle. He was always the first gone. It was all for this build up, for this moment to really lay the beat down and break the inner circle up from within. Me saying this doesn't mean I want it to happen. If I had to say what I wanted, I wanted want the inner circle to win and I want almost all of them to have the titles. They're fantastic. They're a great faction. And now that they're face, it's just that much better because you can cheer for them. Whereas when they were a heel faction, you're not supposed to cheer for them, but... But you are, and you're singing their goddamn songs anyway. Yeah. So I don't want it to happen, but I feel storyline-wise, to make things interesting, Sammy turning and joining up with the Pinnacle and having them actually be this, like, big top faction. Because then what you'll get is Cody the, the face that runs the place and like the good guy of all taking on the pinnacle eventually. And because there's so many goddamn members in this nightmare has, family. Yeah, he has to reach out to the nightmare family, the gun club, ask if the factory is interested even once they figure out their problems, holler at the bunny quickly, get some mercenaries on their side. Oh, can we get more butcher and blade? Like, Especially for blood and guts. There's a lot of things we need in AEW. Is it Daga? Is it Tessa? Controversial? We're a YouTube channel. Comment below with what you think. Daga is the fourth member of the, the split up pinnacle to make the fourth <laughs> horseman is Daga. You know who I think should join him? Who's been putting on uh, the muscle? Joe Hendry. I saw a tweet the other day of him. He just like tweeted like 265 pounds. Like, is he still singing though? I don't know. I don't see him in anything anymore. And it saddens me because I liked Joe Hendry's singing. Okay, we've gone off topic and we should end here. So we're going with the pinnacle collapsing inner circle winning. That would be ideal. What do you guys think? Let us know your thoughts in the comments below. And if you wanna learn more about our thoughts on the Pinnacle in general, we have a full video on whether or not they are the best faction in AEW. And if this is your first time here, make sure you subscribe to the channel, stay up to date with everything Midcard Maniacs.